The iPhone 7 will be known for one thing, breaking convention. From the headphone jack loss to the iPhone 6 echoing design, this is the iPhone that pulls away from Apple's normal two year cycle of big design shakeups. But peel back the skin and you'll see a refined device that has its eyes dead set on the future. Welcome back to Byte Review. Now let's dig into the iPhone 7. This is the first numbered iPhone to not undergo a massive design overhaul. However, that's not to say it hasn't endured any changes though. The unsightly antenna lines have been pushed to the top of the device, making them blend in with the build, which is a really welcome sight. The camera hump has been revised and is easily more handsome than it was before. And perhaps the biggest and best change is the addition of waterproofing, which finally means it can survive a coffee spill or a toilet drop. Additionally, the iconic home button has also been revamped, and actually it's no longer a button at all. Instead, Apple has opted for the same technology that's in its MacBooks. It uses an upgraded Taptic engine that's present in the iPhone 7 to simulate the sensation of movement on the new flat surface, tricking you into feeling a button. It's really quite strange initially, the button no longer has any travel to it, but it really does a good job of convincing you that it did. It's a smart addition to the iPhone as a whole. I know plenty of people who have a floating home button on their iPhone screens as theirs is either sticky or broken. The screen has seen a slight improvement over the iPhone 6S as well. It's still a 1080p panel, but Apple says it's got a wider color gaunt and is 25% brighter, which looks true enough when you place it next to a 6S. However, it's not something you'd notice on your own. Am I a little disappointed that Apple still hasn't opted for an AMOLED or a 2K screen? Sure, but this is still an excellent LCD panel that will please any pixel peepers out there. Finally, there is the addition of stereo speakers, one shooting at the bottom of the device and the other located in the earpiece. It's great to see a stereo speaker setup finally hit the iPhone, and it makes watching videos and consuming media a lot more enjoyable. There's also some new additions to the colours this year. The matte black option is a clear winner for me though. It echoes the black iPhone 5, and it's great to see that stealthiness come back for the 7. Despite that wide variety of changes and upgrades, you'd still have a hard time telling this apart from an iPhone 6 or 6S. The incremental design changes goes to show that we're hitting a point now where the industry has plateaued in terms of phone design, big screens and metal bodies are in, and even Apple are feeling the pinch. Only Samsung are really pushing the boundaries with their curved screens, which don't add any real functionality as such but still impress us on an engineering level. The overall design is great though, I think the head and the chin are a little large and again I think Samsung have a better idea on screen to body ratios, but the design is classically Apple, and a beauty nonetheless. There is one hardware change which is more divisive than others though, and it probably deserves a video in itself, but let's just get it out there. Apple have gotten rid of the headphone jack for the iPhone 7, and how that will affect you purely depends on how you use your phone. Do you charge your phone a lot while listening to music? Then this will most likely annoy you, but if you don't then you'll find it more of a minor irritation. The bigger question is why have they done it? Well you could argue that Apple are looking to the future like they've always done. They've got a bit of a history for getting rid of stuff, the original iMac didn't have a floppy disk drive, the CD drive was done away with as early as the introduction of the MacBook Air, and the latest MacBook has a single USB port. Or you could argue it's another revenue stream for Apple. Yeah, headphone jack is the only part of the iPhone where they don't make any money. Apple don't own the headphone jack, but take it away and what you're left with is either Bluetooth or the lightning port and the lightning port is owned by Apple, which means manufacturers have to pay a small royalty fee to create products for it. Look, I might be totally wrong, but I think it's most likely a mixture of the two. However, I do think its disappearance was inevitable. Bluetooth headphones are becoming way more cheaper and widespread, and now we demand so much from our devices that maybe their space is better used for other technology. Is it the right time for that to happen? Well, maybe not, but we would have faced it sooner or later. For me, I've just added the adapter to the end of my normal headphones, and so far that's been totally fine for my usage. On the software side of things, I've actually been iPhone free for about a year, so I knew coming back to iOS was going to feel a little strange anyway, but it was amplified even more by the release of iOS 10. There's a ton of new features here, and actually, there's probably a better way to do this. Race to Wake is here, which is okay, but I'm not on it yet. Swipe to unlock is gone, which might annoy some. iMessage had a huge update covering games, digital touches, text animations. Personally, I dislike it, and it reminds me of the MSN Messenger, but hey, I guess it's kind of fun. Notifications now actionable from lock screen and better in general. The home app has been added for smart home users, so that's basically nobody. There's been updates and overhauls to Apple Music, photos, and news. Phew, I guess that's all the main stuff. And on top of all that, the new A10 Fusion chip, which is Apple's first quad-core processor for the iPhone, coupled with 2GB of RAM, makes running iOS 10 an utter breeze. Seriously, this is a quick phone. 
onto the camera, and if there's one thing that most of us can agree on, it's that over the years, the iPhone has always had one of the best cameras you can get in a smartphone. And let's face it, the iPhone 6S was, and still is, among the top cameras out there, only arguably bested by the Galaxy S7 series. But with the Plus model at least, Apple aren't content with just making the camera better. This time it's got two 12 megapixel sensors, two focal lengths, optical image stabilization, and an upgraded seven megapixel selfie camera to convince you it's the best of the rest. So how does it do? Well, the most interesting part is the addition of the second lens, which is marketed as a telephoto lens. Basically, it means you can zoom in times two without losing any quality. It's a really great feature to have since so many people zoom in with their phones with terrible results. The other lens is your standard camera, and it's pretty good. It's got a wider aperture than the 6S and includes optical image stabilisation, which essentially means it's better in low light, and to my testing this does seem to be the case. Details are held on to admirably, and the noise is kept to a minimum. The camera launches in a flash too, and photos in good light look great. Things are super accurate and Apple's image processing is a lot less heavy than Samsung's or LG's. However, I did see some softness in the shots, and for me at least, I'm not sure if it beats the camera prodigy that is the Galaxy S7. Video typically holds up really well. Optical image stabilization certainly helps with an unsteady hand, and the slow motion features are still second to none. The camera does also have another trick up its sleeve too. Dubbed portrait mode, it promises to replicate the depth of field you'd get from a DSLR, using both the cameras to measure depth information and digitally blur the background. It's not currently available to the public, but the example photos look good so far but it looks like we'll have to wait a little longer before we can go hands-on with that. Overall, the camera experience on the 7 Plus is pretty fantastic. From the lightning fast app to the clever implementation of the dual lens setup, it would be fair to say you'll be happy with what it turns out. I'm just going to say it, battery life on the iPhone 7 Plus is easily the best I've ever had on a smartphone, period. Here's a screenshot of two o'clock in the morning. I'm on 61% after a long day of use and I could have easily used the phone the following day and not be worried about it at all. Actually, I did use it the next day. Here's another screenshot from 9.30pm on that day. I still have 5% left and I'm confident I could make it until I hit the sack. It's really been a good while since I eked so much battery out of a phone. It's really a shining example of how Apple's software and hardware work together to produce such fantastic results. However, I don't game on any of my mobile devices, so my usage, although rather large with photos and general use, never really pushes the phone to the max. I do think it's a shame there's no Apple equivalent of quick charging unless you plug it into the iPad charger, but with a battery like this, getting to the end of any type of the day should be a total breeze. I'll round up this review by saying, for a lot of people, the iPhone is the only phone they would ever touch. Will the iPhone 7's lack of a headphone jack convince them to leave? I really doubt it. Many iPhone users reel at the idea of switching to Android, and the loss of such a port might annoy some, but I don't think it will alter most people's buying habits. So let's look at the good. The speed of this phone is nothing short of amazing, the camera is excellent, waterproofing makes a really welcome sight, and the battery life is almost godlike. And to look at the bad, the body is quite large compared to others, and of course the beloved headphone jack is no longer with us. So that about rounds us off for the iPhone 7 Plus review. Apple has once again made a fantastic device, and it might be its most convention-breaking phone to date, but it's a solid upgrade for Apple across the board. Thanks for watching this review, and if you're new, Give that subscribe button a little tickle and hopefully I will see you all in the next one.